this like really makes the worldly people, the heathens, <laughs> I'm just going to use that word, whoa, I'm sorry, whoa. mad because they don't understand what selfless love is. It's not about not... Yikes. If you're not a Christian, you don't understand what selfless love is? Dun, dun, dun. What's up, guys? How you doing? I'm Paul. <laughs> I'm Morgan. Mm. And if you're new here, make sure you subscribe. We risk giving TMI. To help you navigate DMI, dating, marriage, and intimacy. Welcome, welcome everyone. everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We got a show for you today. I'm ready to dive right in. I'm ready to get right into these <laughs> clips and take the boxing gloves off. Get a few rib shots. No, no, there will be none of that. <clears throat> We will not be punching anyone. No, no. It's totally figurative. It's <laughs> totally figurative. I think actually there will be some very good discussion to come out of this video. And we already learned something because I put in the thumbnail of today's video, um, what was it like? Why can I never remember how I like title never. and label stuff? You know I, did, I, I did <laughs> valid pushback question mark. Okay. I'm being sincere there. Um, yeah. We already have received something from this channel. We lifted our microphone because we noticed that their <laughs> mic was lifted and I didn't even barely notice. So we're going to lift ours up and just see how it does. Yeah. A little higher. If it makes our voices even more. Mwah. Anyway, And Morgan. it's a little off center because I talk quieter than Paul. So. <laughs> yes, but great to be back with you guys. All right. Let's dive right in. What do you got for us, Morgan? Guys, 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 the boop boop boop. You know that we love to talk about sex and intimacy at TMI, Navigate DMI, Dating Marriage Intimacy. Well, we created a 15 page PDF downloadable digital file. 80, uh, what are we calling 80 it? 80 questions and prompts to make your sex life sexier. We dropped it yesterday. It on is, our website. It is on our website. The link, you guys know, the link is below. Uh, seriously, guys, get it. Just get it. Morgan it's $12. and I, we created this <laughs> thinking about like what has helped us in our intimacy, what has helped us in our communication, mm -hmm. what has made things spicier. Mm -hmm. Seriously, like, we're just wanting to be as practical as we can. Yeah. We wish that we would have had something like this early on in our marriage, the first year, the second year, mm -hmm. because it's kind of difficult. It's, it's, awkward to have these conversations and then you're like okay well I will look to see if I can find advice and that can be a little awkward because you want to make sure you're keeping it you know 100 not getting into some right, sketchy right, right, right. online yes so this is a safe resource it's fun intentional you're gonna have deep conversations if you allow them to go there yes. and just a fun sexy time a spicier sexy it time, is so. a spicier sexy time so get that and patrons get it for six dollars instead of twelve dollars paulandmorganshow.com excellent all right morgan i'm gonna play the first clip actually you are manning the oh, laptop but uh i just wanted to say this um we pulled a f so this video that we're going to be responding to is one that came on my radar. I started watching a little bit of it and I found myself being like, okay, this husband and wife duo that are now atheists, I believe they were Christians because okay. um, they talk a good amount about that. Uh, these guys, I, I have a, I'm being completely sincere here. I like these guys. I do. And I, I like the way they handle, even though they, they push back on us. Um, several times. I like the way they conducted themselves overall. Yeah, their names are The Antibot is the name of the YouTube channel. I pulled a few things that we're going to be reacting and responding to from their video, but it's a longer video. Feel free. I linked it below if you guys want to watch the whole thing. I have not watched it. I have heard some of the clips that Paul pulled in to play this. And from what I've heard, they sound like nice people. <laughs> they sound like nice people. The nicest people who have made response videos to us. But they, but they still, they're, they're, they're pushing back. Um, right. But the first clip that I wanted to play, I thought was very interesting. I don't know, Morgan, maybe there's been like one other one, but I'm not even sure if I've ever heard a channel that's pushing back on us, mm -hmm. us, an atheist channel, say what they're about to say. So I, w I wanted to play this clip first. All right, here we go. It's not really cool to make assumptions of what their relationship is like or what Paul's motivations are or what Morgan's mental health is based off of gestures or like body language that they yeah. have in a video. Like that's really 
they say plenty of stuff that's problematic that you can react to. Yeah. You don't need to resort to like, oh, Paul scratched his nose, so that means X, Y, and Z. Right. I I really do feel for them in that because I think I think that's really terrible that people yeah. do that to them. I mean, like people have probably noticed that my hand is messed up right now from skating. But I I thought about going into this video. If Paul if Paul had an injury like this, especially on his hand. I feel like he probably wouldn't even be able to appear on camera. No, because, because people, people would assume like, that he's doing something yeah. horrible to Morgan. And, and like, that's, oh, that's from beating Morgan. We're trying not to attack them as people. We're trying to elevate this discourse rather than talking about some, like, dumb that you're that would just make us money for saying. That's yeah. what a lot of people do with Paul and Morgan. Can we just take a second and give them a round of applause and <laughs> hit th give this video a thumbs up if you appreciate that. That was refreshing to me. That's very nice. Thank you, guys. <laughs> now let's move on to where they go after us. No. <laughs> but I did just want to say they have a valid point. One time I scratched my neck a couple of times Stop and it was it. like red. Stop and I was it. genuinely afraid that like going on camera, people were going to be like, what did he do to her? Like I genuinely was like, I don't even know if I should go. <laughs> like I need my neck to chill out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, anyway, the uh, the next clip that we're about to play um, it is the part of our video. They're referring you guys to the video. We are, we, we did like a three part series, popular dating advice. We reject marriage advice. We reject. And then we did popular sex advice. We reject. And they're hitting on some of those. And this first clip we're going to play is where Morgan and I talk about how you should not bring PORN in any capacity to spice up your married sex life. And here was part of their response to that can be something that can harm you in, mm -hmm. in certain ways. Like the comparison, the erectile dysfunction. Yeah, thing. Those everything are, those, she was listening. Those are legitimate things. Yeah. And, but if you take all of those concerns into account and you're able to consume this like with your partner, mm -hmm. then I don't think there's anything wrong with that. It's, it's It can get you in the mood and it can help your sex life yeah. like you're together to incorporate that like as long as you understand like you're saying that it's yeah. like a fantasy. It's person to person obviously you want to like collaborate with your partner and make sure that you're watching something that both of you enjoy that mm -hmm. gets both of you in the mood that like works for both of you not just one. not pushing the boundaries of your partner or something yeah. they would not be comfortable with right but if you take all of that into account i think that watching some kind of sexually explicit or even just suggestive material can be good for your sex life it's, yeah it's just it's more complicated than you should totally watch it or you shouldn't at all. Yeah, it's not black and white. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so PRN, according to these guys, is not black and white. Morgan, do we stand our ground? Oh, I hear our baby upstairs going, <laughs> going nuts. Do we stand our ground on this? Well, I appreciate that they can recognize that PORN is damaging and can be damaging and has a lot of issues. <laughs> um, but I would say that we absolutely continue to stand our ground and we believe that the bible makes it very black and white of that that is not something you mess around with it's not something you bring into your marriage it's not something you do before marriage or look at before getting married um yeah just, i could see morgan yeah yeah i mean i agree i could see how someone that is in the world a non-christian would be like no this flipping on this thing as they said as long as you both like it it can get you more in the mood guys we need to look no further than the word of God as believers. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, if you look at a man or woman to lust after them, you've committed adultery in your heart. Mm -hmm. If you're watching PRN, what are you doing? Even if you're about to get it on with your spouse, mm -hmm. what are you watching? Right. Like, is that not, maybe you're some kind of crazy exception, but it's like what you're what you're getting turned on by what you're watching by some other people doing sexual things so that you can then go do sexual things to me it's like we're called it's an, a really exciting and encouraging thing that we're called to get one another in the mood and like we get to take that time in foreplay and take that time throughout the day of like speaking to one another kindly and whatever sexy i want to <laughs> kiss you tonight <laughs> the yeah, I just don't think that we should ever yes. use 
P-O-R-N as an excuse to help us get in the mood. So that's the, what mar- the marriage bed is to be kept undefiled. Don't be defiling it by bringing in other couples doing stuff. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Uh, all right. Next clip, Morgan. Uh, they're playing. They're responding to where we talk about uh, sex before marriage. Mm-hmm. And I thought this one was quite interesting. Okay. Sex before marriage. Right. Go. That's not going to affect anything. Yeah. I agree with her when she's saying having sexual partners before your spouse does affect things because it will affect things, but I don't agree that it'll affect things negatively. Yeah. Like Like, at least it doesn't have to. She's not saying that, but she's like kind of implying (laughs) that like when she says affect things that it's negatively affecting things. Yeah. And it can like you, there yeah. is baggage you can definitely take from previous sexual experiences that you could be taking oh, into yeah. your current partner, definitely. but it doesn't have to. Yeah, it can be like a positive thing a lot of the time. Right. It, again, it's not black and white. Yeah. I mean, yeah, like <laughs> they you really miss nuance. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we're here to provide. I hope you can really sense just how serious this is and how much. Maybe not for them, like they're saying, but for other people, how much pain and shame comes from this subject. And I mean, before we got married, you had done some things and I hadn't. And like that did affect some things. But after we left Christianity, it didn't. It like all of that completely evaporated. I mean, it didn't really cause a real problem. But it was a somewhat sensitive subject. So it was more like time. the shame of it, right? It, the the shame of it, yeah, was really the thing that weighed on us, not not anything actually bad. <laughs> not Nothing the bad happened, yeah. yeah. And that's the thing is that when you stop feeling ashamed about it, nothing bad happens. It's yeah. all good. The yeah. only reason that they experience or other people might be experiencing negative consequences a lot of the time is because it's like the shame they're yeah. experiencing like the shame that they're feeling right it's not because anything bad's actually happening it's a self-fulfilling prophecy yeah like we're going to feel bad if we do this and, and it's going to affect our marriage and so they do things and then they feel horrible about it exactly. and then it affects their marriage because they feel so bad about yeah. it yeah no. interesting i want to hear your thoughts on this i have a lot to say if my mom but if my mother brain can work. Yeah. I So it's interesting hearing them talk about like the ashamed feeling like you shouldn't feel ashamed and we only feel ashamed because we kind of like self prophesy over ourselves of this is bad so I'm going to feel bad about it. Um, I will say I do feel like as Christians and as the church and just as a whole um, we can like shame and condemnation or sorry, shame or condemnation slash conviction. It's a very small line that we can fall over into shame rather than just being convicted. And there's a difference between conviction and shame or condemnation. Um, so bear with me. <laughs> okay. No, yeah, this is good. This is good. So I, I understand what they're saying of like, there are a lot of Christians out there living in shame because of their past. Um, whether it was sexual stuff or totally something else, um, even when they like know that they're forgiven by God, like it's sometimes it's really hard to walk in that forgiveness or what does that can forgiveness look like? And so I believe that there are, are a lot of Christians walking around in shame from their past and not in freedom by, uh, of the forgiveness. Like personally, I don't, I'm not ashamed of my past at all. I'm not living in shame. When I met Paul, I wasn't ashamed when I told him that I was not a virgin. I felt convicted that I had done those things and I knew that there were going to be possible consequences from living in that sin for a while, but I didn't feel shameful about it because I repented and I knew that my heavenly father forgive me. And I tell this to you guys all the time when you reach out like how can I forgive myself from the past stuff that I've done I'm like you are a measly little human being human bean bean little bean (laughs) um if God the the creator of the universe 
can choose to forgive you, why the heck can't you forgive yourself? It's good. You know, like if God, my heavenly father, creator of the universe has chosen to forgive me, I can then make a choice to forgive myself. And so like, I understand what they're saying, but I also believe that there are Christians out there who are not ashamed of their past at all. And they understand that like there is conviction, but they're not condemned. They're not walking around living in shame for the rest of their lives. And I hope that in our videos and in me sharing my past, like it can bring you all to a place of walking in true freedom with Christ. Um, so yeah, that was a little tangent. That was good, Morgan. I, I like when you <laughs> are able to just really kind of unleash your stuff. I find it interesting that they said, like, pretty much if you remove the faith element, now that we're atheists, right. if you just push all that away, sex before marriage, like, I guess he said he was a virgin, she wasn't. Or, but yeah. once they've removed all of that and kind of got their thinking in a very uh, non-religious, non-Christian mindset, mm -hmm. it hasn't brought any pain. Right. And I would say... For some people like that. For some non-believers. Yeah. For some non-believers, that may be the case. Um, but yeah. I, let's be real, though. For many non-believers, that's not the case. And I'm talking right. non-believers here. Yeah. Non-believers, you still are up in your head struggling with comparison, whether it's the guy or the girl, one mm -hmm. more than the other, thinking about, oh, this person's been with 10 other people. Jealousy. It, yeah. Comparison. It, there can all, be all a, this crap. Yeah. So let's not act like that's maybe the norm. I don't know what the statistics show. Yeah. Um, but... Man, there can be a lot of, of baggage and pain brought into it. But then outside of that, whether you're on the side of, oh, I'm totally fine. Yeah, it doesn't affect me that you've slept with 20 yeah, people before us. <laughs> or, or you've been the one that slept with several, a, a lot of people. Or that I've slept, yeah, with yeah. 20 people. But despite all that, as Christians, I, I just love, I love the simplicity of this. Are we going to be obedient to what the Bible says or not? That really, mm -hmm. I, I love that. Mm -hmm. Oh, we can we can almost just like... All this other stuff, that stuff is fine. Are we going to be obedient? Mm -hmm. The Apostle Paul, over and over again, he's talking about keeping the marriage bed holy. I already said that. Fleeing sexual immorality. Read. I'm reading through Proverbs right now. I'm just like almost amazed. I'm reading through Proverbs. Get out of town. Over and over again. <laughs> get away from the adulterous woman. Don't go down those streets. Is your life really going to be reduced down to a loaf of bread? Her house leads to death. Death, death, death. Why are we, and I know that, I guess this is more fornication, mm -hmm. sex before marriage, but like, man, yeah. don't make light of this stuff, Christians. Yeah. And again, it's, it's conviction. It's not condemnation. And yes, that is a very easy line to cross into it. And I believe that the enemy wants us to live in shame and how, you better believe, and they're going to talk about the enemy in a bit, right? It's next yeah, clip. Okay. Um, but you better believe that the enemy does not want you living in the freedom that Christ offers. And so, yeah, shame is a hard thing to get rid of. Play that next clip. Clip number four. Do you need to tell them what it's about? Or? Um, Morgan has just said that when you're, she, Morgan, what was the quote? You shared this on your Instagram and you referred to it in this video. Just of the podcaster. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just saying the, this guy was just saying like the devil when you're dating is like, take your clothes off, take your clothes off, take your clothes off. But when you're married, he's like, keep your clothes on, keep your clothes on. And yeah. So it's, it's kind of a catchy thing but there's validity to it or at least we thought there was let's see what the anti-bot has to say <laughs> that's a scary sight to see from the enemy so i don't think it's the enemy that you know before you're married convinces you that you need to take your clothes off and like you have to be having sex and like makes it so tempting it's because when you're told not to do something so much it kind of makes you want to do it more yeah it's the belief system itself that's causing that, not necessarily like the devil. I mean, when there are natural factors sufficient to explain why single people want to have sex and why married people might want to have less sex, why do we have to say that there is a guy that's doing it? A secret, invisible guy that is influencing you without your knowledge. It's like... That's an, that's an extremely superstitious way of thinking about yeah. it. And if any other religion did that, they would think that, oh, that's just ridiculous. Why can't we just explain it by the fact that studies show that men's testosterone tends to go down when they're in a long-term relationship. And so they, therefore they want to have sex less. It's like, 
yeah. It's, and it's also <laughs> when you're a young Christian person and you're told, you know, you're pushed purity culture, you're told not to have sex, that only makes you want to have sex more, you yeah. know? And then when you are finally married and you're free to have sex, then it's not, what's the term? It's As enticing, maybe? It's not like the forbidden fruit anymore. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, there's a good biblical term. <laughs> oh, uh, very interesting. A <laughs> hey, shout out to, uh, it looks like in the live chat right now, genetically modified skeptic, who is the husband in this scenario, is, uh, he's here. Hello. Welcome. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome. Seriously. Fun having you here. Morgan, yeah. um, do you stand by that statement that they were pushing back on? When you're single, Satan is trying to get you to take your clothes off. When you're married, he's trying to get you to keep them on. Um, well, yes, I do still stand by that. But, you know, I I want to make it clear. I don't think that the enemy is always is the reason that we fall into sin. It's just our human nature. It's, um, yeah, we do want the forbidden fruit, and that's our flesh. Um, the forbidden fruit, it makes you toot. The more you toot, the better you feel. <laughs> That's, what am I, in fifth grade? <laughs> yes. Um, but I, you know, God made this beautiful thing where a man and a woman, when you get close, um, whether it's just in, in a relationship, dating relationship, whatever, like you start having these desires to be physically close. Morgan, can I just say real quick, keep, keep remembering where you're about to go. You, <laughs> I, I do want to make it clear, though. We do believe that there is a very real enemy that yeah. is trying to make us fall. Oh, yeah. So it's like that's where we'd push back on them, the antibod, um, by saying, like, the devil is prowling around like a roaring lion, lion seeking who he may devour. Like, that's just scripture. That's biblical. Yeah. So yeah. we would be very naive to just throw all of that out and be like, oh, no, mm -hmm. we agree with them. Yeah. Like, again, that's a very humanistic mindset. We're... We're people of the word, right. but we also don't want to go so far as to say the enemy is trying. The enemy's why have you given me your toughest battles? The enemy, right. the enemy, the enemy. When it's <laughs> we're doing it to ourselves many right. times. It's like we're putting ourselves in situations that yeah, these uh, desires are going to be stirred up within us and don't arouse love until it's so time. And so Ecclesiastes, Songs of Solomon. Yeah, <laughs> and so yeah, I think you know, just being smart, using wisdom and discernment so that we don't fall into temptation. But a lot of the time, the reason we're falling into temptation is because of us, not the enemy. So yeah. Um, but yes, let's not be naive as well to the enemy. <laughs> that specific saying, when you're single, the enemy tries to so-and-so, marry so-and-so. Yeah, that might not be in the Bible. Yeah. And it might be a little bit cliche. Right. But ultimately, you guys get the gist. And I think there is biblical wisdom behind it for the most part. Yeah. I feel fine about sharing that podcast or saying that. Oh, yeah. Let's go to the next <laughs> one. Um, the next one would be clip number five. Oh, this one is interesting. Honestly, this one may have been where the antibod and uh, the... There he is, a genetically modified skeptic, where they... What are their real names? What are your all's real names? What are your all's real names? <laughs> um, but where they may have gotten the most, or at least one of the places where they got the most passionately heated against us. And so I, I'm going to be intrigued to see the discussion around this one. Play clip number five. You are also not entitled to sex from your partner. Sex is not a mandatory part of a relationship at all. That's one of the nicer comments, for sure. So, you know, this, like, really makes the worldly people, the heathens, <laughs> I'm just going to use that word, whoa, I'm sorry, whoa. mad because they don't understand what selfless love is. It's not about not... Yikes. If you're not a Christian, you don't understand what selfless love is? That's... I mean... It's, like, kind of dehumanizing, honestly. Yeah, like, that's kind of, like, super f***ed up. Yeah. <laughs> They clearly don't think that if, you know, if you don't have Christ as a part of your marriage, that it's complete, that it's a real, it's a legitimate marriage. It's a, it's a yeah. complete relationship. So I guess that extends to your ability to love. You know, we don't understand what selfless love is because... We're not Christians. Yeah. We're heathens. Yeah. Oh. 
Morgan, you went there. You went there and you're rubbing some people the wrong way. Does anyone really like to be called a heathen? Is that what you call them? Yeah. <laughs> no, no one wants to be called a heathen. Do you stand by it? Are they heathens? <sighs> All right. <laughs> are, th are they heathens that are married but incapable of selfless love? Okay, I just want to start by one saying. <laughs> <laughs> you are the worst. Juicy, baby. It's getting juicy. I, I do want to apologize because I think that I jumped on the boat of, I should not have said they don't know what selfless love is. I think that's really ridiculous and stupid of me to say that. Wow. So I, th that's where my thumbnail was correct. I said. Yeah. Could we be? Yes, going too far. Yeah. Going too? Did we go too far? Morgan, just apologize. You all heard it here. Yes. Humility is pouring out like the <laughs> rushing river rain, <laughs> rain of the river. Yeah. Um. I. That's obviously not true. Um. There are plenty of non-Christians who uh, portray selfless love on a regular basis in their marriages and not in their marriages just towards other people um so i take it back what i said um <laughs> i know heathens can sound a little harsh and i was just having kind of fun but granted typically <laughs> a someone who is not a, a Christian or I don't know what the historical roots, a religious person. Right. They were, weren't they called they pa were pagans, pagans or, or the, the heathen? Heathens, yes. I, I don't know. You know, yeah. you guys do what you want with that. <laughs> Google it. Google what is a heathen. But if you're an yeah. athe are atheists heathens, I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe that's know. too harsh. I need to look at the definition, I guess. But they're atheists. Yeah. Non-Christians. Worldly, whatever. Non-believers, yeah, whatever. Sinners. <laughs> we're all sinners. <laughs> Um, yes, so I hope that you all can accept my apology. <laughs> okay, so let's do this, though. The context that they were kind of pulling out, they were referring to from our video, we were, we were talking about, um, we, we, we had yeah. just read a comment yeah. uh, of some, of someone who was saying, you guys, you know, your spouse does not, pretty much it, it came across to us as mm -hmm. a very... Uh, th this it, it wasn't so much like we're we're targeting them or we're targeting a person, but the idea of where culture seems to have arrived when it comes yeah. to married marriage and sex, right? And so that's what I think more of Morgan, where you were coming from, yeah, of like this the whole like the world's idea of love, self love is so pushed, and like if anyone asks you to do anything that makes you even like a little bit uncomfortable or, or yeah. not even just uncomfortable but just like you don't feel like doing that then screw them and oh it's gonna mess it's gonna well, steal don't screw them it's gonna mess with your <laughs> happiness and your vibes yeah oh forget it yeah and that's and and we've seen i mean dude you go back and you look at the comment section of some of our videos discussing sex and marriage and mm -hmm. what that looks like and i realize that some of i mean just some of our takes, some of what the Bible says, can be hard to digest. I get that. Yeah. But we were pushing back on that idea. And mm -hmm. yeah, so guys. Yeah, so that's where I was coming from. But um, yeah, we, we yes. may have come across a little too brazen. Yeah. Um, but also, <laughs> though, you did put words in our mouth a little bit. What what was the guy's name there? Drew and Drew. Taylor. Drew and Taylor. What's up, you guys? Say hey to Drew and Taylor. Give <laughs> give this video a thumbs up. Uh, sh show <laughs> does nothing for them, but everything. Some love, for us. some love to us. That in return to Drew, <laughs> but no, Drew did take a little bit of of the words, put words in our mouth when he said. So I guess they don't recognize a non Christian marriage as a real marriage. Oh, oh we definitely yeah, do. Yeah, no, that's marriage. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Even non Christians between a man and a woman. Even non-Christians <laughs> getting married, we, we're grateful for that. Oh, marriage yeah. is a good thing. Mm -hmm. I feel like no matter what. And yeah, I mean, whether non-believers want to acknowledge it, it is still like a representation so, ha! <laughs> of Jesus and the bride, his bride. And so, yeah. Yeah. Win-win. Win-win. <laughs> but ultimately, we could have probably worded that better. Yeah. Love it. We like these dialogues. I'm, I, I genuinely am grateful for these. I felt like this one was profitable. Uh, you guys, comment below in the comment section, though. Where do you fall 
Uh, we, we hit on several things. Mm -hmm. um, just let us know. Let us know where you fall. Let's keep the dialogue going. Uh, the anti Drew and Taylor. Taylor, if you guys <laughs> want to hop in the comments after this video, it would be fun to keep the dialogue going. Guys, make sure that if you are in a place, maybe newlyweds, um, or you've been married for 10 years and you're just like, I think there could be more with our sex life. Like, I think there's a lot of room to grow in this area. Just click the link below, grab this ebook. We really hope that it blesses you guys. I think it will. I, th I genuinely think this ebook could really be a good thing for your love life. Like, we sure hope it will. I think so. I'm confident it will. I think you will at least have one good time. <laughs> Is one great sex session worth $12? Absolutely. Or $6 if you're a patron. No, I think... A, I think, A thousand percent, <laughs> yes. I think it could be a game changer for years one time please oh yeah you have way more fun but i'm just saying i, I don't want to build it up too much i can feel confident about one that time. is starting the bar low <laughs> that is really low all right guys we love you very much we'll be right back with those in the live chat be blessed have hope and be free Hey guys, as you may have noticed, we get very few brand deals. A big reason for that is because we make unashamedly Christian content. We've had brand deals taken away from us because people who don't like us reach out to them and demand that they cancel us. Due to the fact that we stand on what the Bible says and we don't conform to culture. Which is why our patrons, the names you see here, are so important. You guys really are the lifeblood of this ministry. We could not do it without you all. If you guys believe in this content and you want to partner with us on Patreon, go to patreon.com slash paulandmorganshow or click the link in the description. Go, Go team. team. That was the one. That was the one. <laughs>